Good evening, everybody. My name is Robbie Chifoletta, and I hope you've had a wonderful day. Many of you here may be gamers, which means that you might have an understanding of how the market is currently working and what's currently being produced. However, you may not have noticed that blind and partially sighted gamers have next to no way to access the very same multi-billion dollar market. Unfortunately, its accessibility is not there for the blind gamers. And disability gaming is considered social politics as opposed to a game that can actually compete with other games in that same genre. This is a huge missed potential. But fortunately for us, here at Little Onion Games, we see missed potential as opportunity. So, introducing us, Little Onion Games, a company that will leverage the mainstream appeal of the horror genre to create true universal accessibility. In this weekend, we have produced a demo for you guys. Many of you might have played it. It is an auditory, first-person survival experience that research has shown is thrilling, thrilling for both the sighted and blinded and partially sighted individual. There is a protagonist who is blind, whose goal is to sneak through a room with a frightening metaphysical monster in it. There are obstacles and you have to be quiet. We used advanced path-generating code and state-of-the-art binaural audio to make sure that every playthrough is unique. The beast is blind, and we feel this is important to represent our target market because it personifies the internalized struggle of people grappling with, the, with this disability. This is very important and has been popular with the demographic. Please enjoy our teaser and the responses of people who played it. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about branding. Our branding considers two things. Aesthetic, obviously, it's got to look nice. And legibility, because there are many people who are partially sighted that can't read certain fonts and cannot see certain colors. So we considered these things. On top of that, it has evolved from feedback from our SMEs at the RNIB a.k.a. the Norfolk Vision, which, for those who don't know, is a fantastic charity for the blind and visually impaired. We believe that our company will start generating revenue after the first year. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that trailer that we showed you, we're going to improve it, we're going to make another one, and we're going to use it to kickstart crowdfunding by releasing it and recording people playing. Later on in that first year, we're going to make a beta, which will be released to the public, early access for those who made donations to the crowdfunding. We'll get our feedback, and we'll use it towards the final thing we'll be making that year, which is a full level with narrative, you know, complicated personality types, all of this stuff. And that will be where we will actually start monetizing this and hopefully have some good success. We believe that we have the talent, potential, and unique selling point to create our own market that is accessible for everybody. Here is a list of some of the social medias that we have figured out have a common, um, a common popularity amongst both sighted, partially sighted, and blind individuals. We really want to take advantage of digital media like influencers um, because they might be willing to also work for free to promote themselves. It's a really cool concept they might want to showcase. All right. Biology tells us that mutation is the catalyst of evolution. It is only when we stop considering disabled individuals as the unfortunate minorities that we can achieve re real innovation. It is only by putting on the blindfold that we can truly begin to see. Thank you.
Well, thank you. That's uh, well done. And the video was um, quite something. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, the judges, we love the idea and we were impressed by the demo also on the day. Thank you. Um, I'd like to really just ask you a very simple question about your understanding of the market size mm -hmm. and also the market share you'll be able to get in one, two, three years' time. All right. As things stand, because accessibility is so poor for blind and partially sighted, there isn't that much of a market. We spoke to our contact at the RNIB who said he hadn't played a game in many, many years because he couldn't find a way to do it. So we've got to accept that when we start, there's going to be a very small demographic, but we're sure that everyone who's listening is going to be interested, hence the advertising. So that's where horror comes into play. Removing sight actually improves a horror experience. So we're taking advantage of those people who actually just want a really good horror game to play and will actually be interested in the concept aside from its disability accessibility. And then finally, as more people you know, generate interest, we should get a bigger market growing in people that have heard that this is a blind accessible game and that they're blind and they're going to want to play it. Do you have a rough idea of the percentage of market you're going to get? Uh, at the moment, there are 350,000 uh, blind and partially sighted people in the UK. Worldwide, that's a lot, lot bigger. Uh, Percentage-wise, I'm sorry, I can't answer that, but um, we will look into it. I'm sure we have the stats somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.